good day. I'm Scabbard Gaming and welcome back to another episode of Scabbard Craft. <clears throat> Today I'm going to take you through anvils. Now anvils are a quite expensive item which can be used for repairing and renaming items as well as enchanting. And I will show you how to craft one. Now an anvil, as I said, is quite expensive and I'll show you why. An iron ingot can create an iron block as long as you put nine together. Now you actually need three iron blocks. I'm wondering if I've got enough iron. Just create these three. I should have done that one go, but just to demonstrate the fact, three iron blocks. Now put three iron blocks across the top and create a little stand for it with iron and you have an anvil. Now an anvil is an advanced item show you why. It, as I said, is very expensive <laughs> as you just noticed. Um, I need a place to put it, don't I? I'm running out of space in my house because of Bozo. Hey Bozo! Now, if I put it here <laughs> with a clang. Okay, now anvils are usable items, so a little bit like a crafting station you right-click to use. Now, it's quite unique in its function. You see, like I say, and as it says up here in very hard to see grey text, it can repair and name. Now, in order to name something, you place an item in the box, and you can place it in the first one, but not in the second, that's the combination. Now, this first box is what you're attempting to repair, rename. Um, and if I were to type something in the top here, the iron fist, it's my iron fist. Okay, and you will see that it has an enchantment cost. Now this cost, let me just take that out, this cost is your levels at the bottom here. See I have 31 levels to spend, which is what I'm doing with enchantment. So 31 levels. Now I can add this item for instance, if I put this item in, you will see that it has a degradation level that's below half. If I put that one in, you will find that I will get a fully repaired one at the other end. Now, obviously, I'm using another item that's already completely fine, so that would be ridiculously inefficient and pointless. But that is how you repair things. I can also, let me just pick that axe back up and I'll show you what else I can do. I can also repair items using the main ingredient of that item. So, for instance, an iron axe. I can use iron. Now a single piece or a single piece of the recipe for the item, so for instance iron in this case, can only repair up to a maximum of 25% of the item. Um, so if I put another one in there I'll get another 25%. So that would get me the majority of its um, durability back and will cost me two levels. So to be fair in this case this would be pretty inefficient way of repairing an iron axe from half. You spend two iron ingots and get a nearly repaired iron axe when it only costs three ingots and a couple of sticks to, to create in the first place. So I wouldn't do that but you must re remember that obviously with any tool you can have enchantments and if this was a diamond axe with efficiency five on it <laughs> and unbreaking five and was a ridiculously expensive and valuable item then putting another axe in here to repair it um, or using a cup uh, maybe a diamond or two to repair it would actually be an efficient way of keeping mm. hold of that very expensive and valuable tool. So that is what anvils are for in the most part. Now you have a couple of other things that you can do with anvils. Um, for instance you can enchant things. Mm. Now I don't have an enchanting table yet because I haven't quite got to that point and I don't have any enchanting books. So I'm going to cheat slightly here just to show you how this is done. Now I get my game mode and don't worry I'm not going to keep any of this stuff because I don't believe in the whole cheaty thing but um, let me just see where's the enchanting stuff. I need an enchanting book but I can't remember where it is. Materials, no. Transportation, redstone, decoration, it's not decoration. Miscellaneous. 
And it's like, oh yes, of course, it's under the tools or the combat tools that you enchant. So if I'm going to enchant an iron axe, for instance, um, you can take one of these enchanting books, for instance, Lure. No, I don't want to lure. Luck of the Sea, Fortune 3, Unbreaking. Let's just chuck in breaking on it. I, like I say, I'm not going to keep hold of it. Now, what you do is you put your tool of choice in and you put your enchanting book in and it gives you your enchantment cost of three and at the end of it you have your iron axe with unbreaking three. Now I'm going to do it and you see um, I will have lost a couple of levels if I was not in creative and I will have got my iron axe with unbreaking three. Now I'm going to show you something else that you can do. Now I can get unbreaking three and I can put unbreaking three in there and I'll still get unbreaking three. But let me show you. If I enchant another iron axe with unbreaking three, I can combine items. So it's unbreaking three with an iron axe with unbreaking three and I get unbreaking three. There's actually a chance that you get unbreaking four. And in that case, splendid. So you can start combining items together to get bigger and better enchants. Obviously I didn't get it in this case. I'm still not going to get it, but it's it's a really good way of combining items, and obviously, you know, being able to combine items mm. with unbreaking three to get unbreaking four is fantastic, especially when you're dealing with diamond tools. So that's one way that you can use it, and I think that's a fantastic way. Um, let's see what other ways you can use it. You can combine mm. two different enchants. So again, let me find another enchant. I'll get efficiency five. Now. If I put it on this iron axe and I give it efficiency 5, we get an iron axe with efficiency 5. Now if I put efficiency 5 iron axe in there and an unbreaking 3 iron axe in there, you get an iron axe with efficiency 5 and unbreaking 3. So now you have a very valuable iron axe. And let's see if it'll let me do it. No, it'll still give me unbreaking 3, typically. But I do know that the, the enchants can combine to make a better enchant. So that is roughly how you enchant something. Now. Um, as well as that, you can use this to name things. As I've shown, I could call that um, Mighty Axie. And when I bring that out, I get Mighty Axie, which is great. I've got Mighty Axie, Efficiency 5, I'm breaking 3, and that is a valuable axe and something worth repairing with other tools. Aha! Now, I'm not going to do that because it won't, doesn't need repairing. But. Uh, you can also name other items and you can name mobs and NPCs, such as Bozo here. And I'll show you how I did that. i um, not going to lie, I did cheat slightly because I wanted to be able to name the cow. So you come in here, you right click and you insert a name tag. Now with this name tag, you can call it whatever you want. So um, let's call someone Fred. Frederson. Hello, Fred Fredison. So, when you take out the named item, Fred Fredison, mm -hmm. on this name tag, which I may have forgotten to mention, name tag, pull it out. Now, name tags can only be found naturally generated in the world, such as in minecarts and chests and so forth. Um, you can't create them, just like saddles. So, they're one of those annoying single use items that you find which do have a really good use. Now, name tags, obviously they give the item a name or the person, the item, the subject, the creature, thing, NPC, whatever you want to call it. They give the person, cow, a name, as you can see here with Bozo. Hey, Bozo, good man. But they also make the item permanent. So they won't despawn. So for instance, you could make a zoo of Minecraft creatures and you could put a zombie in a cage and if you name that zombie you could even name a zombie if you name the zombie he won't despawn not naturally he could still die obviously and that that, that name and the name tag is then lost but if you wanted to do it you could now if I show you I'm going to name one of my sheep let's name one of my sheep Fred Fredison has to be a creeper Come here, Creeper. Double taps. 
Yes. Got him. Right. Sheep, come hither. Right. Now, as you can see, none of these sheep currently have names. If you hover over a sheep, you'll find that they do not have a name. But, Mr. Brown Sheep, with a right click, is now called Fred Frederson. And he's now called Fred Frederson. Now, name tags are only single use, but where I've been creative, mode still. The name tag is not consumed. So, there you go. That's how you use name tags. And that is why an anvil is incredibly useful. Now, obviously, you're not going to rename and... Well, you might rename loads of items, but whatever you wish. But you're not going to use anvils on incredibly cheap items. There's just no need. Um, an anvil has a 12% chance of being damaged every time you use it for repairs and enchants and so forth. Um, so that it will go from anvil to damaged anvil to very damaged anvil, and then at some point it will just break and disappear and you won't get anything back for that. So being as expensive as it is on in terms of iron, it's not wise to <laughs> use an anvil on cheap items name tags and so forth unless you really want to or really have to. So let me just get rid of some of this stuff that I've cheaty got. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, and I'm going to get rid of my axes because I don't want cheat axes. I need a really compiler. And I'm just going to replace those iron axes that I used. Just because. Although one of them was damaged so I'll get rid of that. I'll not move cheat. So there you go. That, let me just get back to the way it was. That is how you use an anvil. And I need to get rid of this anvil. And you will notice I have made a lava bin, which is not a bad idea if you want to be able to get rid of items. Here we go. <laughs> you just use a trapdoor, chuck a bit of lava in the bottom, make sure the surrounding blocks aren't destroyable, such as wool. And then um, there you go, you've got yourself a lava bin. Isn't that good, Bozo? Exactly, good man. So that is Anvils. I hope that this video was very useful to you and I hope that you come back soon to see some more videos. If you did like the video, please like and please click subscribe it helps my channel enormously and I'd like to see you again. Um, in my next video, I'm going to dig into Obsidian and for that I will need a diamond pick. So luckily I did find some diamonds and I'm going to use them in my next video. So hopefully you'll come back for that one and I'll see you then. Bye bye.